You're watching Bloomberg UTV. I'm Hindul Sen Gupta. Perhaps the best way to introduce my guest, who really does not need introduction, is that he is the world's foremost guru of the mind, perhaps in an increasingly mindless world. Author, philosopher, thinker, consultant. He's been a range of things, worn multiple hats. I'm delighted to welcome the inventor of the term lateral thinking, Edward de Bono. Good to be here. I want to then begin by asking you, many people believe that we are increasingly in a mindless world. Well, Technology uh, makes us mindless, violence makes us mindless. What is the importance of thought then well, in a I, mind world like this? In my latest book, what I suggest is the biggest problem facing the world today is not climate change at all, but inadequate thinking. The reason is that our thinking, at least in Europe but elsewhere too, was inherited from the Greek gang of three. Plato, Socrates, uh, Aristotle. That came into Europe at the time of the Renaissance, when schools, universities, thinking were in the hands of the church. They were not interested in design or creative thinking or perceptual thinking. They were interested in truth, logic, and argument to prove heretics wrong. So in education, we developed a culture of thinking for finding the truth. But we never developed thinking for creating value. To be sure, innovators, inventors have, but culturally, never. And that's a huge defect in our thinking. In a sense, it seems to me that you're saying that a lot of our problems yes. is derived from inadequate thinking or not thinking things through. For instance, the war in Iraq. Yes. For instance, the war in Afghanistan. Yes. Then actually a rational conclusion of all given uh, ideas at, the, at, a, at a given point. Well, the problem is, as you stated it, our existing thinking is based on analysis and judgment. And if you judge that's a bad guy, you have a war or you attack him. Give an example. Israel and Gaza recently. Now, my solution to design a way forward is all those countries which set up Israel should jointly give the Palestinians a grant of $3 billion a year. But every time they fire a rocket at Israel, they lose $50 million. So you design a way forward. It's not enough just to say, you're a bad guy, we're going to wallop you. Now, many years ago, at the United Nations, I tried to set up a group to provide alternative ways forward, alternative solutions. It proved impossible. They said, we are not here to think. We're here to represent our countries, not to think. So they're not going to do it. So one of the big projects I have is I want to set up a palace of thinking. And if anyone listening to this program has a nice palace, you'd like to make the palace of thinking, that would be good. Palace of thinking would have two functions. One as a platform to receive ideas from any source, publish them. The other is to host creative meetings looking at specific problems. I'll give an example of an idea received. Some time ago, maybe a year, maybe two years ago, I was in Delhi giving a seminar. And afterwards, a young man came up. I wish I could remember his name. He said, I've got a new idea for democracy. He said, if you have children, you should have an extra vote, just one vote, not for each child. The reason being, if you don't have children, your concern for the future is very short. If you're 50 years old, what do you care about climate change? It's going to last your lifetime. But if you have children, you have a commitment to the future. And it's a good idea. It's a good idea. So it would, the Palace of Thinking would be a platform for good ideas from anywhere, and also the ability to organize specific creative meetings. And we are really in a world where this kind of creative thinking does not happen. No. Tell me then, um, so many people, including historians, financial analysts, today believe that the recession that we went through, some would say still are going through, yes. is basically inadequate thought. It's a whole bunch of very clever mathematical people yes. coming up with solutions that no one thinks through. Well, it's, there's, in economics, there's a lack of design. In economics, there's a lot of positive feedbacks, vicious cycles. For instance, if you think you're going to be unemployed, you don't spend money. If you don't spend money, factories don't sell goods, more people are unemployed, so on. More people fear being unemployed. It goes on and on. Or in the property market, if the property market's falling in prices, people don't buy. They say, let's wait till it falls further. Now, you need to design solutions. I'll give you an example for the property market. We have a new contract, the Bona contract. You sell your house at today's price, but you agree with the buyer if the house price index falls by 10% or 20% over the next year or two years, you will refund the money. 
Now, there's no point in his waiting, because he does just as well by not waiting. If no one waits, the market doesn't go down. So there needs to be a design effort to cut out these vicious circles, which give you the huge fluctuations in economics. But economists are not designers. They're good at describing and analyzing. In the future, do you believe that the last two years has irretrievably changed the way we think about economics, the way we think about markets, the th way we think about doing business, really? Well, the, the, I would disagree with the word irretrievably. I think in 10 years' time, it'll all be forgotten, and people will just be carrying on the same way. The core of what I'm trying to ask is there was a post-depression generation. Yes, yes. Will there be a post-recession generation? Has it impacted us that deeply or is it merely skirting the surface of our psychology? I would say the latter, the latter. People say, well, it's just unfortunate, but we're out of it now and we will be sure it doesn't happen again. Of course, it will. But So, you see, one of the um, problems, as I say, is the lack of design. Now, India is an ideal country to launch my big idea, which is, let me ask you a question. How many costs are there in India, roughly? A million every year? That's quite a lot. There's the main ones, but a lot of them. Anyway, I want to invent a new one. This is called PCCT. Right. What does it mean? Positive, constructive, creative thinker. Right. So these are people who will pride themselves and have a self-image that they're positive, constructive, creative. So in any situation, they will make an effort to be positive, constructive, and creative instead of just using their intelligence to criticize, attack, and so on. So India would be the ideal place to get this going, then spread all over the world. Positive, constructive, creative thinkers. There's and how would you do it? Hmm? How would you do it? Well, you mention it, I mention it on the program, and get people interested, and we'll gradually build it up. OK. Essentially, uh, a lot of people believe that, you know, Newsweek did cover saying we are all socialists now, yes. and so on and so forth. Essentially, you're suggesting that this is a blip in some sense in our historical radar. Um, but does that also mean, as some people are suggesting, that we are committed to making the same mistakes again and not so much in the distant past? Some people believe that bubbles are being created even as we speak. Oh, I think that's true. Now, one of the big problems with democracy, and no one dares mention it because it's so serious, is that many professions won't stand for parliament. Engineers, architects, scientists, business executives. Why? Because if you're not elected the second time, you can't go back to where you were. So what happens is, mostly worldwide, uh, Parliament is full of talkers, lawyers, teachers, journalists, trade unionists, who don't have any habits of constructive thinking. So we're being governed by a bunch who are not constructive thinkers. And that's a really serious problem. And does that essentially mean that in the future, uh, even in the near future, yes. we are making the same mistakes yes. as we are being governed by the same people who allowed the first mistakes yes. to happen yes. Yes. of the recession? And also, of course, there's the old thing, you know, free markets, freedom to do anything, freedom to be stupid, yes. Are that we being stupid happened. again? When you look at the world economy today, do you see... How should I put it? Bubbles of stupidity again? Well, it, it's, put it this way, now, to be fair, people might say, no, the danger was some people were being too creative. You know, the securitization of mortgages right, yeah. in the United yeah. States and yeah. so on and so on. That, that is a real possibility. So I think better controls, yes, are, are necessary. And as you know, some countries are much less affected, Canada, Australia, much less affected by the, this um, crisis. <laughs>